Hi there, my name is T-Code and I'm your host for the Discussant interview segment. With me here is a prolific podcaster, writer, media and marketing expert with over a decade of influence in the Nigerian audio industry. And I'm talking about no other person than Osage Alonge. Osage, it's a pleasure to host you on this Discussant session. Hi, thank you so much. I am very, very, very excited to be speaking with you. Thank you so much. All right, then. So let's begin. So tell us a bit about yourself and your podcast-related activities in Nigeria. Well, um, my name is Osage. Um, I have a background in media and marketing. I started off, interestingly, you know, in the music space. Um, I used to be a rapper. Then um, I think I found my calling by telling other people's stories. So I did a bit of public relations for artists. Then I delved more into journalism and I spent a couple of years, you know, writing and breaking stories around the entertainment space and then moved more into business and technology. Um, but, you know, while doing all of these things, right, and even moving further into marketing, I think my knack for telling stories has always been there. So I've either had, you know, launched podcasts where I'm, you know, telling stories about culture or pop culture or things about history. And my love for podcasting moved me further into, you know, launching a podcast network um, where we work with African um, voiceover artists, podcasters, and storytellers, you know, in just connecting with their audiences by telling them the most informative, educative, and entertaining stories. Awesome. That's great. So we're speaking with the right person because the topic of this uh, discussant interview is the future of podcasting in Africa. And then I'd like to ask you, uh, I'd like to ask you a question. What would you say about the podcasting industry in the last decade? Have you would you say you've seen good progress in the industry? Well, globally it has turned to a multi-billion dollar business. You see the likes of streaming platforms like Spotify giving the likes of Joe Rogan, $30 million deals, you know, um, in the last 10 years, we've seen it grow astronomically, um, audience size, impact, influence, you know, if Michelle Obama can have a podcast, then it's definitely one of the channels to reach, you know, a certain type of audience. We've also seen a lot of people who have been able to carve a niche audience for themselves, you know, their podcasts about cooking equipment that people enjoy and yeah. you know, love to listen to. Um, so that's what it has also done. Locally in Nigeria and in Africa, it's still very niche. It's still very nascent. Um, what we're figuring out right now is how to get the podcast to the audience. You know, do the audience have the enough data to listen to a 40 minute, a one hour, or two hour podcast? You know, what other formats can we get this podcast to them? I think the first phase in terms of like creating podcasts, we started to see more of that. More people are interested. Um, technology, however, is going to solve this problem for us as it has solved many other problems with deeper internet penetration, um, with more access to, you know, smartphones, mobile phones, and with um, the cost of data dropping um, year on year will definitely see a bigger audience. Interesting. So you've mentioned a few things that I would consider to be solutions. And I'd like you to you know, speak more on that. What are the things or the changes that you hope to see going forward in the African uh, podcast industry? Um, the first thing is content, right? So there's a bulk of um, podcasts that have to do around uh, have to do with culture. You know, you ask them, so what's your podcast about? And they say, oh, we just talk about things that happen week on week. Mm -hmm. And I want to see more podcasts. I want to see more podcasts about history. I want to see more podcasts about you know some of the events that have happened. I want to see more podcasts about personalities mm -hmm. and not just oh, this is what happened in the news this week. I want to see more podcasts about you know stories leading up to elections. You know, the Kenyan election just happened. Was there a podcast that actually journaled everything that has been happening in the last 18 months to two years? Mm. Nigeria's 2020, um, 23, the elections is coming up. Do we have podcasts that follow each candidate and are telling these stories? Mm. So I, I believe, you know, content, as regards content, a lot of storytelling still needs to be done. We still need to look for different stories to tell. 
Right now, if you go to the categories, pop culture section is filled up. But if you go to the sports section, if you go to um, the wellness section and a couple of other sections there that you need more content in, I hope we can uh, have more people who are um, more focused and uh, more involved in other genres other than the very, very popular ones. I think that's like the first step. And once the content is right, I want to see more consistency. So the average podcast now stops at five episodes. You know, everybody, podcasting is like the 2010 version of blogging. Everybody had a blog. Everybody wanted to have a blog. So everybody wants to have a podcast. But I want to see more people be more consistent with their podcasting because it only creates a wide, um, a potpourri of like content that you can consume from. So uh, I want to listen to, you know, um, news. I want to listen to music related. I want to do whatever you want to listen to. You now have like a wide um, variety. You have a variety of podcasts to listen to. And I think the third thing is we just need more wins. We need more people to have more collaborations with brands because it just validates podcasting generally. I'll give you an example. Um, Jola and FK of I Said What I Said. After four years, we're able to have a three-city a three city podcast live show. One in Lagos, one in Abuja, and one in, in Ghana. Yeah. And by doing that, we validated every other person who has been thinking about going into podcasting or who has you know been putting out content consistently. So I think those three things are very, very key. Fantastic. Uh, content and um, validation. I can't remember the third one now. <laughs> um, um, oh, okay. All right. Fantastic. So let's, you're speaking on celebrating um, podcasters and validating what they do. What do you make of a platform like Abva and the award event that we are celebrating today? I think it's super important to have platforms like Abva who recognize podcasters, what they do, right? And who also carry like a front to other um, partners or businesses or associations, right? So people actually take podcasting seriously. And I like what Abva is doing. Their first focus is actually on the podcasters themselves, right? Which is celebrating these podcasters, recognizing these podcasters. I think um, having a, an association that does like all these things. And, you know, it's not also for showboating. It's very critical. You yeah. see that they are more concerned about the podcasting industry and the podcasters, which are like the first things. And that's why they're starting off with like, you know, an award um, 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 show. I'm super excited about it. When I learned about it, I was talking to a friend and and I, and I just went to the website. I got an email as well. I was like, yes, this is what we need. Because I've been having conversations with people like, we need to start something. And, you know, everybody yeah. needs to come together you know, and that's the first layer. The second layer is because there's a community now, I can reach out to a podcaster in Mozambique, yeah. right? If I'm a podcaster in Zambia, I can reach out to a sport podcaster in Ghana because through Abva, because Abva has now created like that directory, right? Where we can collaborate and meet each other and talk. And you know what they say, we're in a global village, right? Yeah. It's just yeah. one Slack message, one email, and I'm connecting with people. Imagine if I were writing a Pan-African story, I probably don't need to travel. I can now collaborate with other podcasts in the regions and say, okay, there's this story we want to write about climate change. You are in Egypt, I'm in Kenya, you are in Lagos, and you are in uh, um, South Africa. Let's collaborate on this story and put it out. It's very possible. And it's platforms like Abva that can have that happen. Wow. Thank you so much, Osage. It's been a fantastic time talking to you. And uh, thank you all too for listening to this segment. Osage has spoken about the need for content, the need for consistency, and the need for celebrating each other. And that's why we're doing this today at ABVA. Ladies and gentlemen, stay tuned for more award announcements and enjoy the rest of the event. (laughs) 